Hi, this is Scott. And Shelly from Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. We've had so many questions about the smoker that you guys have seen out on our deck in some of our videos that we decided to make a video of uh, us using our smoker yesterday. As you can see, I start our smoker using just regular charcoal, the wood you, the way you would an old charcoal grill. But we were fortunate enough to have a family member give us some apple. They had to cut down an apple tree, so we, uh, we split up some of that apple and dried it out, and we're going to use that to actually smoke the meat once the uh, charcoal gives us that boost in temperature. So as you can see, I'm, uh, I'm putting cooking spray on the grates to keep everything from sticking, and I'm going to close that up, and I'm going to close up the firebox, and we're going to let that smoker run up to temperature for about an hour. This will kind of glaze the inside of it and make it so that it's nice and clean, get everything out of the inside that we don't want. Okay, this is a perfect example of what you don't want to see for smoke. A lot of people seem to, well, not going back in. Hey, what are you doing? Wait a minute. Get back out of there. <laughs> a lot of people think you actually want a lot of smoke coming out, but you don't. You want thin blue smoke that you can barely see. Now, these cuts of meat are nothing special. That's a regular chicken from a grocery store. That roast is a chuck roast like you'd use for a pot roast. And the small roast in the back is, I think it's a little one of those little Smithfield. Yeah, it's a pork. Yeah, a little, little Smithfield pork, pork roast. Pork loin roast, there you yep. go. Yep. I bought this little thermometer at uh, Walmart many years ago. And what it does, the probes, you can stick them in the meat and it keeps you from opening the top all the time and losing your heat which is something you, you really want to try to, to keep. Now the smoker has its own thermostat up there, thermometer, so you can see what the temperature is. But the problem is it's so far away from the firebox and it's so high, heat rises. So what I always do is I will take and leave one probe hanging down in the firebox so that I can see what the actual firebox temperature is. That way I can balance it between the two until I get it figured out at the very least. Okay, this is us kind of drying the apple just a little bit more that we're going to use next time around. But there's a tremendous difference in what the, uh, what the two different thermometers say. Ideally, you want to be smoking your meat at right around 220 to 225 degrees. This thermometer up here right now, I believe, reads around 310 or 315. So that's the difference between the two. You don't want to overcook it and burn the outside. You want to slow cook it. That's the, that's the key. Well, that looks good. It does. Just getting started. Once I verified the temperature of the smoker, I just took that out of the probe and stuck it on the other side of the chicken breast. Because chicken is very sensitive. You have to... You have to get it above 140 degrees within the first hour or you, or you stand a chance of having a bacteria build up that can make people sick, which is the last thing you want to do. I would say uh, poultry is probably the most sensitive to cooking like this and then pork behind it. You want to make sure you get everything done. You want to make sure you go by temperature, not by what it looks like. So we thought since we had the smoker going that we'd throw some corn on the cob and some uh, of our potatoes out of the garden on the grill. We always love, or on the smoker, we always love the corn and potatoes on there. It tastes so good. I melt down some butter and uh, what did I put in? Um, garlic. Garlic and... Butter, a can of Budweiser. Well, not a whole can, because it had to be taste tested Well, we first. had to test it first. Yeah. Probably close yeah. to a half a can. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if you can see down in the bottom, there's a pan of water down there. That isn't to catch the drippings. That actually acts like a fire baffle, and it keeps the flames from coming up and searing the, 
the food that you're cooking and it also provides a little bit of moisture at the same time keeps things from drying out now you can see more of the thin blue smoke that I'm talking about it should almost be invisible if you're up close to it and you can see this is the tough part of the smoker here you spend a lot of time sitting around Mabel is just exhausted from all the hard work that's our grand dog <laughs> one of our grand dogs one of them yep that is literally the thin blue smoke that you're looking for that right there is perfect that's how it should be it's really hard to to adjust your damper on your firebox to keep that all the time but that that and your correct temperature of 200 to 220 or so 225 that's what you want because you want to remember the meat your chicken is going to be done poultry is done at about 160 to 165 degrees so I verified that with the like a candy thermometer and we're going to take that chicken off and we're going to wrap it up in tin foil and we're going to set it aside it's going to probably gain another 10 degrees while it, it's not actually cooling off it's actually going to sit and, and cook a little bit in that uh, in that foil pan while we're waiting for the rest of the stuff So now that the chicken is done and uh, sitting, finishing its in its own juices in that aluminum tray wrapped up tight, we're going to move everything else a little closer. Now the roasts are done at a whole different temperature. I would suspect uh, most of the time they say it's done at 180, but it's rare. If you if you're cooking on a smoker, I strongly suggest running your uh, pork and your beef up to like 200 degrees even as high as like 208 and then give it the same treatment you gave the poultry you're going to want to take it off oh that looks good doesn't it you're going to want to take it off and wrap it up tight and let it stand for an hour and that's how you finish it but once you hit 160 with the pork and the beef you want to wrap it up with the foil to keep the outside of it from burning so that's what we're doing here. I'm gonna we're gonna wrap this up tight and we're gonna put it back on the smoker. Wait, extreme close up. Yeah. Mm. We're gonna put that back on the smoker until it gets up to about 208 or so, and then we're gonna take it off and leave it right in the foil to finish. And we will do the same with the beef. The beef is just bigger, so it hasn't it hasn't got up to temperature yet. This is a slow process. I this whole thing, I believe, took about uh, four hours, with the majority of the time being the beef. The chicken cooks fairly easily. It, it would have cooked even easier and even quicker if we'd spatchcocked it. And that's when you cut it down the sides of the backbone and flatten it out. But we got to take the uh, core on the cob. All we did with this was uh, you, you didn't shuck it all the way. You just pulled the corn silk off, and then right. we used the, used the rest of the the outside to cover it back up while it's being smoked. Yeah, just a little. Yep. And we're going to rearrange these potatoes a little bit to get the ones that were the furthest away from the flame the closest so that they get some of that heat and get cooked all the way through too. We're just giving everything a little bit of drizzle of the butter and beer and garlic. Yeah, that's your department. Mm. If I'm drizzling beer, it's usually in my beard. <laughs> well, we got to have it on the food too. <laughs>
Okay, so our digital thermometer says that that beef roast is now up to 161 degrees. So we're going to give that the same treatment we gave the pork roast. And we're going to take it off and wrap it up. Now, I don't bother to try to wrap it over those electrodes that you stick in it. It's way easier and more accurate if you just wrap it up and shove it right through the foil into the meat. You want to make sure you don't get it out the other side because Wait, then... another gratuitous meat shot. Yeah. If you get it out the other side, you're going to be recording the uh, recording the temperature of the firebox more than you are the temperature of the meat. So always put it in at an angle. That way it doesn't go all the way through. Okay, so things are coming along nicely. We're getting up towards the temperature. Everything is done, supposedly, according to the thermometers. So what we're going to do is we're going to close everything up and finish it up. And once the uh, roasts hit around 220, we're going to take those off and let them stand inside, wrapped in their foil. And we will come back and check the corn and the potatoes and make sure that everything is cooked. Okay, so it's been about uh, another 45 minutes or so and everything was the right temperature. Now we've let it stand for an hour. And uh, this made me nervous at first because it looked like that was tough when she was cutting it. But actually the problem was it was so soft the knife had a hard time cutting into it. If you watch you can actually see that it really wants to pull apart. So it's actually very soft. Oh, it was very good. This is the pork roast. Like I said, this is one of those little Smithfield oven roast. You can see the smoke ring. That's what the pink is. You'll see that on the chicken too and a lot of people see that and they panic because they think the chicken's underdone. It's not. It's always going to have a smoke ring. As long as that chicken comes up to 160, 165 degrees, it's safe. How is it? Delish. <laughs> and the chicken. Oh boy. Man, oh man, that was so good. It's like the potatoes were done. Yes. We actually had sour cream, so we put a little butter and sour cream on there. It was so good. There's a lot more to this than what we're talking about. You actually, if you go online, you can see all kinds of different recipes. It's, it's fun to experiment, you know, and I'm by no means an expert. But like I said, we get so many questions about this that this is how we do it, right or wrong. You gotta remember, I'm just a main hillbilly. I don't, I don't know much about the smokers. Or something that's pretty new to me. Boy, that looks good. <laughs> oh yeah, so good. And the beef. And the beef. That was yummy too. The more I think about it, the more I think we should have just avoided the knife and pulled it apart with forks. Yeah. It was so tender. It was pretty good, I have to say. Ooh, I could smell it oh, by yeah. this time. It's pretty good. I thought it would be. So, once again, I'd like to thank you for uh, coming along with us to check out our smoking video. We had a smoking good time. Hope you guys will enjoy this. Kind of a new type video for us. So, Ava, do you have anything to say? Yeah, thanks for coming by, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. And, and have a great day. And remember, we're whiskey. And sunshine. Off-grid. Thank you.